So I recently released a couple of React Native videos and the one common theme about those videos was the influx of people in the comments and also on my Discord telling me that I should try Flutter or that Flutter is better than React Native or that, you know, why am I using React Native? And the truth is I have absolutely nothing against Flutter. The entire logic around picking React Native instead of something else was the fact that I was on a team that had JavaScript talent and React talent, and it made sense to choose a mobile platform like React Native where we could readily use that talent. And as it turns out, it worked exactly like that. Building this new React Native application was an absolute breeze because everybody knew all the technology that was already present. But I am nothing if not open-minded to new technology, so in this video we're going to try out Flutter as a React Native developer. I think the goal for this video is going to be get installed, get the sample application running if there is one, I assume there is, and then to make observations and assessment about Flutter as a technology. So let's get started. So I'll be using my usual setup today. I got a terminal, I have a Nexus 5X tethered physically to my computer with a screen copy for the screen mirroring, and it's just a vanilla install. So first things first is get Flutter installed. Their documentation has no dark theme, so we're gonna end up getting Retinal Burn. Looks like they support a bunch of platforms, which is pretty cool. I'm on Linux, so I'll go there first. Although there is quite a few steps to get Flutter installed manually, they do offer a snap, and because of the distro I'm using, I can just install that directly. After waiting a few seconds, the installation is done. After that, it wants me to run Flutter Doctor, I guess to do dependency checks, so I'll run that real quick. It looks like it's downloading a bunch of stuff. Took a couple of minutes, but it eventually finished. I think most of the rest of this I could ignore. There is a step about getting Android Studio installed, but I think that's just for using their emulator. Since I'm using a physical phone and screen copy, I think I don't have to do that. It does say I should run Flutter devices just to make sure that it can see it, so I'll do that now. And I do. It shows my Nexus 5X, so everything's good there. So we're skipping to the test drive section now. Hopefully this gets the sample application installed. So I'm not using Android Studio, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I'll be picking Terminal and Editor. And it says just do Flutter Create and then My App. So I can probably name My App whatever I want. So I'll do Flutter Create, we'll just do My App. And then hopefully that creates everything. And it seems like it did. So that's done. It looks like it is using material components. And it's telling me here that the code for my application is in lib slash main dot dart. For running the app, it looks like I just cd into the directory and then do flutter run. So we'll do that, we'll see what happens. So it took about a minute or so to come up, but it did finally come up and here is the flutter demo homepage. And I'm guessing if I push this plus button then maybe just increments it a bunch of times. So it looks like that is what it does. So flutter does have hot reload, which is nice, which means that you can make changes to your application code and then it'll just show up in the app instantly without having to restart everything. So it's telling me how to do that now. It's saying open main.dart and change the string here and then uh, save my changes and then type R in the terminal window. So I open that file, I scroll down here, it says you have pushed the button this many times. I'll change that to you have clicked the button this many times. I'll click save. And that was my next observation is as soon as I click save, it does not update the application. I actually have to come into the terminal and hit R. And once I do that, after a second or so, it will update the application. So it's worth stopping here for a second talking about a couple things. And this is one area where I think it's actually kind of a downgrade from React Native. I have a feeling that there's probably a way to get hot reload work without having to click into the terminal and click R, although the docs tell you that that's how you're supposed to do it. Also, the, one, the other thing I noticed is that it's actually installing an Android application directly to the device, whereas the way React Native works is through Expo, you download the Expo app, and then it shows you the app through that app. And what makes it really powerful to do it that way is not only do you get hot reload as soon as you save the application, you can also have multiple devices running there connecting to the same React Native development server. So you can have four different devices in front of you, and as soon as you click save, it's going to hot reload all four of those all at the exact same time. So you could have, for instance, an Android phone, Android tablet, iPhone, and then iPad. And to me, that's an extraordinarily powerful tool. But honestly, that's kind of above and beyond. If this is what I had to do, I would not have a problem using Flutter in this way. So the next thing to look at is probably the performance of Flutter, and this is an area where it actually does win easily. A lot of people were telling me in the comments and on Discord that Flutter is much, much faster than React Native, and I, I wasn't really sure why that was, so I took a second to kind of dig in into how Flutter actually does things. And conceptually, it's actually very interesting. They're basically rendering an Android application like a painted canvas. So basically, unless I have my understanding completely wrong, this floating action button here at the bottom right that increments the counter is not actually a native component of Android, like the floating action button component, but it's just a painted button on a canvas that's responding to clicks. 
And the same is true for everything else, the app bar, the text, and then any inputs. So because they're doing this, it actually makes perfect sense why it's a lot faster. And also what I notice is that Flutter is able to take big advantage of the GPU built into the phone because they're actually painting on a canvas, which means they can GPU accelerate that. And of course they can do so with much less memory. I suppose another upside of this way is that they never have to render more than what's on the screen. Now obviously that's true of React Native as well. They never render more notes on the screen, but it is possible to use a ton of memory for stuff that you can't see, and I don't think that would be the case here. So at this point we're gonna turn our attention to the code because the logical next question is, well, if Flutter is this great at performance and memory management and this and that, then why don't we just use that? There are of course downsides, and you're looking at the first one, and that's the fact that Flutter uses Dart. Now Dart is definitely not a language I'm experiencing. This is the first time I've actually ever really looked at it. And my first impression of it is it kind of looks like a cross between JavaScript, Java, and maybe Groovy. Obviously given my broad knowledge of programming, I'm sure I could learn Dart in a short period of time. But the fact is Dart is not a popular programming language at all. According to Teob, it is number 27, which is just too higher than COBOL. This makes it relatively unpopular, and I'm sure if you asked 100 people if they know JavaScript or Python, then you asked 100 people if they know Dart, you're going to get a significant more people that know the former than the latter. So that was a long way of saying that Dart is indeed a downside, especially if you are releasing new technology and you want people to adopt it really fast. Imagine if this was all done in JavaScript, people would eat up Flutter in a second. In fact, it's entirely possible that I would have even chosen Flutter for my application that I chose React Native for. So just browsing around the code, from what I can tell, Flutter is just a bunch of widgets, and widgets can be nested inside widgets, and then from there the Flutter renderer can show what it needs to show on the screen. Also from what I can tell, there are stateless widgets, and then there are stateful widgets, and then there is a class that extends this class called state. So there's a build method, which is kind of like the render method with React Native, and then there's a set state function, which is probably similar to the set state function in React Native. However, it would seem that in the set state function for Flutter, you just update whatever state variables you want, and then as soon as that is done running, it's going to recall the build method, which will re-render the screen. I actually kind of like this better. Anybody who's used React before knows that using set state on really complex state can result in kind of weird looking code and some unexpected outcomes. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how this is rendered and it looks like there's a scaffold widget and then inside the scaffold widget is a center widget, inside that is a column widget. Inside the column widget, there is two children uh, text widgets that has the label and then the actual counter. It looks like the scaffold widget also takes a floating action button property where you can supply a floating action button. So doing this via Flutter is definitely a lot more complicated than React Native as React Native just uses HTML, which is a very common technology that a lot of people already know. So I want to just experiment adding a new widget here just to see how easy that might be. So I thought I would just grab a button and then put it below the label and then maybe make that button increase the counter by two. So I'm pretty sure I could just put my elevated button just as another child of this widget array. I don't have a style, so I'll get rid of that. And then I'll set the text to increment by two. And then I think in the on pressed, I can probably just use set state to maybe so I just did a hot reload, look at the app again, and I see a button here that's increment by two. I can press it, but nothing happens. So perhaps now it's just as easy as doing set state and then a function in here. Inside here, I will do counter plus equals two. And hopefully that is enough to make it work. Come to my application and it looks like it's working fine. So I think this ends my experimentation with Flutter. I, I do have a positive opinion of it. There's a couple things I like and there's some things that I don't like. I think for me, the hardest thing to probably get over would be having to use Dart and then having to build views using this method as opposed to something more common like HTML. However, I understand why they do it. This is what it takes to make the rendering as smooth as it is. I think for right now, I'm gonna to stick to React Native because it's what I know, but perhaps I could use Flutter on a future project. And there's gonna be a lot of React Native and Flutter developers in the comments. So if you have anything you'd like to add or say that perhaps I missed or something that you want to let me know, you should let me know below in the comments. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you in a future video. Take care.